I'm definitely looking forward towards it. I want to see that mid matchup specifically because I have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah, this is going to be just with all the wild picks. The first test is going to be in the comfort. You can see the odds with Bet Boom that you can oh. click through the banner below the stream. That's a beautiful hook to start. So you can get a $15 free bet for new customers as Bet Boom. It'll provide you as uh, they provide a first blood on the side of gaming gladiators with that timber saw <laughs> chase. Even having the Ricky go in It'll be just a moment. There we go. Getting heavily harassed by the good old flaming spears. Yeah, it doesn't even have Inify yet, so that just shows exactly how confident Quinn is. It's going to take a heap of damage though from Thompson. And uh, yeah, the Husker almost gets oh. taken out in the process. Charge for Quinn does get charged down by Thompson. And yeah, not going for the inner fire is a little bit of a risk, I might add. An act of suicide for the Tunga team. Oh, I don't think they're going to be too afraid of doing things like oh. that as we see the Primal Beast diving right in on Quinn once again. Barely able to win it out. And you can see uh, Thompson bringing out just the good old uh, roar <laughs> voice lines on the Primal Beast. Uh, Duracho is going to get taken down this time around. Uh, Crystal Maiden was a bit too far away and... But the most, uh, the mid laners have barely gotten any creep kills in the process. They've just been focused on trying to kill each other. Quinn does have his inner fire this time around. He's gonna use it to keep his enemy at bay. Charge from Thompson is gonna cancel. That actually needs to run away because the TP came through and that is Tofu joining in, helping out Quinn and keeping that lane in control of Gaming Gladys. Right? That Huskar able to get all this free CS he wants for a good minute. It's going to give him the slight edge against the Primal Beast and have the, the space to start toasting him in fire. Yeah, that's a bit rough. Oh, Quinn. And he's still here. He's going to have a, a very unhappy surprise. Oh, but he's still able to get the trample. Nice. <laughs> oh, that mid matchup is not necessarily sure that your safe lane will not get taken down anymore. Look at Thompson. He's looking for a possible catch on to Quinn. Nice interrupt there with the inner fire. Go for rotate the troops together with Sally as well. He's stuck inside the smoke and nothing he can do. Thompson's going to get overwhelmed. They turn their attention to snaking and the roaming supports of Gaming Gladys with the body blocks as well from Tofu just to try and make sure that the kill is secured. He managed to pick it up himself with a killing spree now on the Ricky. Doesn't need it. Just needs the silence to shut them down. No need to set it up. He's able to find all that impact even with the Sleeping Dark Shard unavailable. Don't forget, we're just at the 13 minute mark. It's so early on and this Primal Beast is ready to chase. Finally, a bit of revenge on the Gaming Gladiators as they slam the Ricky down into a paste. Duracho, he's got his axe fully done. Blink Jack is going to be next. Hookshot comes in with the metamorphosis on top. Duracho does not manage to stay alive, even with the Ricky smokes. Dobson doesn't even stop there. He charges right through, hunting for more blood. So Nightfall, able to get that free from going. You can see he's got that Manta. He's immediately going for that good old Tali. And oh no, they're aware that he's oh, trying Quinn. to go for this on the Oscar, but he has a BKB. And the stun goes through the follow-up with the silence with the Ricky. And he's denied his cheeky little play. Do a nice bit of barbecue to get that Aegis. Trying to block any hook shot attempts there, as you can see. Demolish would be a pretty fair way to describe it. The fact that the Primal Beast going into low of Thompson's a bit oh, dangerous. Oh, the interrupt right Trying there. Trying to use the punch hook to save the Huskar, but is denied. That's the first life down. It is with the Silent Snake King getting harassed by Tofu. Nice ulti from Sunry. Entire lineup is Gets interrupted though with the Paul Bryce. Bryce is going to go for the Nom Nom. Smoke onto Thompson. Can he get away? They're trying to continue the fight. The stolen smoke screen comes into play. And they're actually going in. Finally, Ace joins the fight. But with that, Sunder Nightfall will be able to heal back to full. Stolen Timber chain by Saxe. Trying to be such a big nuisance, and he's being successful right now. Ace, the hook is going to miss. He is in trouble. He's actually going the opposite direction to make sure his teammates don't get overwhelmed. He picks up the room timber with Ace. Is he going to be able to get out of there? Oh, the timber chain misses, and he's able to get himself out of dodge. You still have a chase coming out from Saxo, who's greedy for blood. 
Uh, with the Aghanim Scepter being built up as well on the Huskar, that will be a bit more problematic for the TB and other heroes on the opposing side. Because there are BKB piercing spells. The lift drag back, Smackdown with the Pulverize and a quick kill onto Quinn. That's the downside of playing on a hero like Huskar. You play low HP most of the time and quick jump onto Saxon. They will find themselves. A Rubik who tries to force F towards the low ground will not be successful. They freeze tops him, but with the BKB should be able to just get himself out of harm's way. Pop the smoke in just in case. Shouldn't have the info on that, and they're going to be able to get the flank in. They're going to be contacting this clockwork. He's going to be a dead man on the Snake King, even the Huskar rotating in. Oh, they even use the dart for good measure. Well, they do have uh, I Scotty finally done on the TV. It's uh, getting a little bit scary as well. Another sleeping dart comes into play. They're trying to go in for 33. Can they hunt him down on the up? Opposite side, there is going to be a metamorphosis pop. Nightfall gets a kill, blinking forward. They're trying to get rid of the supports quickly, but the damage from Nightfall is going to be enough. He is pumping out a lot of damage in the process. Quinn's going to leap in forward. The Scotty is doing its work. Quinn can't really heal, but not TB can't really sunder. He's going to get mowed down, and now Thompson gets slept up again by Tofu with another smoke screen. No BKB available. 33 is just trying to give him an aura to be able to keep him alive. That will be unfortunate for the side of Tundra. They will lose, even though it's not really superbly great because you are against the Hook Dismember and also uh, soon enough the Huskar Axe. Yeah, and when the Huskar Axe comes out, oh, I don't know what they're going to do. That's pure damage right there coming in from Sax. That's blowing his opponent up. They quickly interrupt Duracho. Nice pulverized damage coming in with the BKB. Duracho's trying to run away. Can he stay alive? Hook stolen by Saxa. Drags Duracho back. Will cost him his life. And Duracho still not dead somehow. Gets the blink off. A little bit further forward, but will eventually be overwhelmed. And right now, they do not have Quinn. They do not have Duracho. They do not have anything. Have a little bit of a war of vision. And Saxa on his trusted Rubik is uh, singing one of the strongest, most painful spells this game. The Chakram, pure damage, something that a Huskar is really bad at. And speaking of which, he's gonna get chopped down by Saxa! Just as that continues, they're gonna go for more. No buyback available for the Huskar. Ace with the BKB. Can the Timbershaw get away? The Sniper comes in to make sure there's no more Primal on his tail. The rest of the team can they catch up? It is 33, but he doesn't have any good control for the timber saw to take him down. I hear the nom nom from the dismember. Pudge is fighting in one different direction. Ace is gonna go for the TPL. Can Ace get away? No, he cannot because again, Saxa is right there when needed. Thompson chasing for Duracho. BKB versus BKB. Hook comes back. Thompson is running out of his BKB, but there's the army. The spiderlings are charging in. Sarri bought back in the process. They're gonna spot out Tofu. Can Tofu get away? He does have a bit of an escapist movement, but the Mickey will be slapped by his own dart. Double jump to the side, taken down in the process. Networth has been nullified and back to the Roche pit, but this time Tundra goes. I've seen this entire tournament. It doesn't matter what you give him in his hands. He's always able to find impacts at his opponents. 33 in the meantime is building up the side device. That's going to be a very big pickup as well. Because they, you really saw it on that timber saw. He was hard to lock down without uh, the Rubik there. And that's the only thing that they really have for the lockdown. Speaking of which, the lock throw comes into play. Hookshot as well. The full control. The entirety of Tundra just surrounding Ace and badgering him to death. Certainly helps to have the Terror Blade, though I don't think they need it. Oh my goodness. This is a siege on the base. Oh, Gladiators. Yeah, they Saksa. don't want to buy back on this Tidehunter, but now. Not the Tidehunter, oh my goodness. Saxa is so, many so nasty <laughs> with that Rubik. Which is pretty impressive considering Tundra are playing with two substitutes at the moment. Granted, they are some top tier uh, substitutes. Nightfall, of course, with Beckham got first place at the uh, Eastern European DPC. As an off laner though, and now he's playing a safe lane. But uh, they're going to go in with the axe. The taunt comes out. The control isn't going to be enough. Snaking's already dead. 33's on the run. The group mother is going to get taken down. And is there going to be any more shenanigans? Yes, Saxa should be a third one to be beat. Without the uh, Terrorblade, they don't have much to fear. 
on the set of gaming gladiator stops and he's gonna get controlled doesn't have his bkb available and that's gonna be three uh, four kills for gaming gladiators and none of them have a buyback at the moment and they're going to have to fight behind and deal with an aegis terribly happily swapping out his uh good old power treads for it this second it's something that you want to possibly reflect if you can and uh the Husker ulti would be perfect because then he'd taunt himself, sort of. Keep himself occupied. They're going to charge in onto the high ground. Can they get the damage in? The break is there. The damage is significant. Quinn is being slowed down. There's a break stolen in the process. The charge is going deeper with the refreshing use from Thompson. Double kill secured. Dodson in the building. Nightfall trying to man fight up against the Ratchet. Does still have a Sunder available, but Thompson's going to get control on the side. He got a little bit too greedy, a little bit too far. The hook comes in. Saksa is going to get control. Nice. Drag back out of there, the Tom comes in to play for Finn, does he get the kill and actually Finn is going to die, that's going to be a dieback as well, Jirachi put the buyback, Ho hook back onto the high ground, Timbersaw needs to disengage, they bought back a mass for the game gladiator side, but they will finally get themselves in control, the Ace is going to get popped in TP without the metamorphs is in no TP no longer, the X comes out immediately and finally they do man. Get close to trip, but it did cost them three buybacks and a dieback onto Quinn. Does he have an equipable axe coming in? Because Ace is incredibly fat. Yeah, and that's a bit concerning. How do they break through him? That's going to be the oh, challenge nice they catch. take this team fight. In. They're going in. Nightfall with again the BKB pop going in, but the A on this. Pop by Duracho, is it gonna keep him alive? No, it's not! Oh, the refresh of Duracho is gonna try and stay alive for a little bit longer. Gets the blink back! The refresher keeps him going, but the rest of the team is in trouble because they do not have their fudge available anymore. He cannot do much except for Hook Quinn out of arm's way. Ace gets the on snaking in the process, but they're chasing for more. Sox out with the control. Is it possible to keep them at their back and arms? It will be a two-for-one trade. Again, Metamorphosis was used, but he did re buy a refresher on Nightfall, so he has another meta available. And that's the entire reason, despite all the refreshers and the Aeon Discs, Used on the Pudge, he is unable to stay alive and gets broken through. Now the Ricky forced by back, and they are going to try to turn Light this ball. around. Able to break this, and oh no, they see the Huskar, they see Quinn. No they will BKB. back away even with the slow. <laughs> oh, run, baby, run! Constantly able to put pressure on your lanes while you're scurrying around the Roche pit to find what is uh, essentially a huge objective at this point in the game. 33 is not yeah, there. That's what the focus is. Back oh the boy, they're pushing in. Oh, good sentry, able to get to sleep early, but it forces the blink out. They're able to expose this Ricky, and now we're we from what Baracho, could be the last team. Play. But he's in trouble. Baracho is going to get controlled up. The fight goes onto the side. Quinn is already dead. No buyback available for Quinn. They tried to keep their heroes alive, but Duracho, what might it have cost? It might have cost them the entire game. Duracho is going to get overwhelmed. Does also not, but not have a buyback available. And he's still on the dieback timer right now. A thousand gold off of it. Tofu, the man that got caught, cost them so much. Three die deaths without a buyback available between them. No idea that there isn't even the buybacks available. The chance for Tundra to take this first game away. Just going to be the defending game coming through. And the second set of racks in favor of Tundra. On towards the bottom to secure Megas before Duraccio will be respawned because he's 800 gold away and he will not get it back in time. They're actually going to go in on to Quinn. He's going to get broken. Quinn, the four staffs do it. They keep him alive. No, they do not. The Husker is just easy fodder. And with that metamorphosis, they should manage to most likely get themselves at the very least Megas, if not more. They are keeping uh, the TV occupied quite significantly though. Nightfall. They're able to keep this fight going for so long. Oh, the lift up drag back, the damage is an end and counter. The third, the ace kill has been secured. A seven kill streak. That's how long he's been alive. Has come through, but he was the one with a vibe available. Drachi is going to go in onto the TV. Nightfall, can he get the sun off? He does get the full sun off. Heels back to Ace's full HP. Drachi with the pressure has to run away. No vibe on Ace. Charge forward, she drops it. He's going to get the pulverized smackdown coming in. Moses was too late. And they find Duraccio, no buybacks available, and it seems no chance available here for Gaming Gladiators. So, without the substitutes, Gaming Gladiators stomp Tundra with the two subs, 
they managed to take game number one against Game and Gladiator. That is a pretty phenomenal performance coming out. To see some uh, blast from the past performance coming out from the uh, Nightfall CK. Well, do you want to keep things nice I and spicy? Don't forget to press the banner below the stream. To get yourselves a fifteen dollar free bet over at Betboom. It is going to be first blood secured. Uh, got that last pick against the Primal Beast. It did not pay off as well as he would have liked. A nice bottle refill there by Tofu to make sure Quinn does handle his lane that superly. 33 is going in on Duraccio. The damage from G Gaming Gladiators is not enough because the healing from the Broodmother is up to snuff. Drag back as well. They're going to surround Celery. Can they get the kill secured? The chase should be more than plentiful and Celery on that. Uh, Crystal Maiden will be taken down. Saxa with a double kill. The Pudge actually loses because Insatiable Hunger healing. Like the initial burst damage coming out from the Pudge is great, but then Insatiable Hunger healing comes out and then it gets really dicey afterwards. Towards mid, a lot of damage coming out onto Quinn. Double damage gets picked up by Thompson. This is very scary for Quinn. He's going to get taken down. The Bushwhack comes in a second too late. And now the two supports are going to hunt down for Saxa. They do have the slow tofu. Can they take down the Rubik? And he's going to go uh, expecting to already lose his life, so trying to man-fight. Might be able to scoop up that uh, bounty. Actually denies it in the process, but will die. Tofu with a double kill. 4-0-1 on Tofu. Yeah, he's still significantly ahead of uh, the uh, Pudge of Duracho, but... Ran down. Ace is the Ravage as well. He's going to get taken down. That's going to be four kills there for Tundra. If you go for the tide, they can TP in pretty quickly to help him out. But top lane, that's where the ganking squad is heading. They're looking for Duraccio again. Will they be able to kill Duraccio? Pops his ult. He gets the Nom Nom on the Rolling Thunder. Gets the Rolling Thunder completely interrupted. And oh my lord, a huge kill onto Topsa. But the stolen freezing kill almost gets rid of. Duraccio in the process, they should be able to find Saxa as well, and that will be a second kill for Gaming Gladiators. The Gang Contempt has failed for Tundra. Say hi, immediately disengage, trying to get the BKB. Once they have BKBs on the side of uh, Gaming Gladiators, they have a lot less to fear because there is no BKB piercing effects available. They are going to get a big catch, and that's why they went for the Tofu Hoodwink, because Bushwhack is very good. And catching out the broodmother that likes to run through the tree lines. And 33 will fall to, but towards mid Duraccio. He's underneath the tower. It's very risky. Actually, in comes the Ember. Going to say hi. That's going to be Quinn. Uh, onto his dear opponent, Saxon, with the Rolling Thunder in return. Could be a bit of a problem. Slight of fist. The Phoenix Egg has been dropped. Quick jump away by Quinn in the process. Will they continue for more? It seems that's not going to be the case. And Ace has his Aghanim Scepter now done. So a lot of damage to be thrown out from the fight. Doesn't have a Ravage available. Duraccio staying back. Goes for the hook. And actually drags back Thompson. Doesn't have a Rolling Thunder available. But Duraccio might have put himself in an awkward spot. The Snake is just burning him down with the Sunray damage. Quinn has fully healed up. Can they get the catch onto Thompson? It seems that will be the trade-off. Again, Duraccio falters. They do manage to find the enemy mid. Until the CK is strong enough to be able to uh, man fight his opponent. Speaking of which, Nightfall does have his BKB available. And Nightfall has not really shown his face that much just yet. Racho though will be uh -oh. jumped here in the bottom lane. Does have his Ag, so you can see a lot of damage in return coming out. Oh my the goodness, that's without the illusions. It's uh, Pudge that's been struggling a little bit this game. That's supposed to be the position one. But the CK, he doesn't scream to me the best counter. 
You know, we saw the Terrorblade having to go for the Silver Edge, despite how much damage he can find. Oh! But it's not going to be that case. Oh, what a clutch. It's just going to force the Rolling Thunder. That can be spammed. And they're going to use that to go for this Pudge instead. Suddenly, it's an entire Tundra lineup. A stun combo. This Pudge unable to escape. The CK able to confirm it. And man, this position one, unable to find anything on the game of Gladiators. CK. A pretty decent hero for the ages. But apparently they can just right click with a little bit of Phoenix assistance. The Pango does enough damage to go through anything he's had because he's had such a poor game. He's unable to contest. And they're setting up with this Not again. Edge. That's going to be a super dead Big CF. Ravage play coming Tide out. The Duracho jumping good in. Space. Gets the catch. Thompson has a Rolling Thunder available. Duracho's BKB might end soon enough. They're going to continue forward. And that Rolling Thunder came in at the end of the BKB. Duracho is going to get forced back to the other side. Taken down in the process. But there is still Quinn in the fight. They get a pretty decent catch going forward onto 33. Tops is trying to get the stun lock onto Quinn. Quinn's actually in trouble. Quinn's dead. Oh Big smack God. coming out from Nightfall. No. The Ages is going to get popped. Celery with the freezing field onto Thompson. But the bash in return means Celery will be found out. And it is a disaster for Gaming Gladiators. The break comes into play. A slow down. The bash are going ham on to Tofu. And that's a full team wipe soon to be happening. I don't think that they're going to stop. And indeed, they're going to get them all destroyed. It started so well with that Ravage play from Ace. To take out the Ember. I was thinking like, well, you just take out the rest of the team. What the Ember is going to do, he doesn't have a team behind him. They'll just take out the Ember anyways. The CK has enough lockdown to nuke. The fact that he has a Mage Slayer and the Silver Edge provides so much damage as we go back to another fight in the man fight. And that Phoenix stun goes through. The Ember is too low. The CK should be able to easily lock him down. But just barely the escape comes through. Well, they're trying to That's not going to stop the chase. Rolling Thunder in again. Can he get catch? Ace is going to get slowed down. But Duracho is the big target that they want to lock and load out of existence. The bounces are superb. Duracho is stunned up again. Three seconds CK stun. Going for more. Quinn's going to get bashed up by Thompson. Oh my and god! Thompson is on a roll mega kill streak on the Pango. And I guess I stand corrected. My prediction here, because it looks better like you are going to be right on the money. Two minutes and 50 seconds still left. They are gonna smoke up on Gaming Gladiator's side, see if they can get a catch. And uh, start off an engagement with a man advantage is what they're looking for. Thompson is the one that they almost always jump for. And this time it seems they might be able to kill him off in time. Snaking at the end, this gets it popped. There's no barbic available coming through. They don't have an infest detection here. Charging forward, the CK going for more. The Phoenix Egg gets dropped. They're going to try and right click it down. And the Phoenix Egg of Snaking is finally taken care of. Quinn gets his second kill because of it. But they're looking for more on the high ground. They're looking for the Rubik because he's doing so much. Oh my lord! Ace gets destroyed by Nightfall. Roger tries to eat his way to victory, but that's not going to be coming through. Nice bushwhack stun to keep him alive for a bit longer. But they are on the run right now. And Quinn's being chased by Saxo who stole the fire remnants. The only benefit is the fact that this Roshan's up and they want to try a little bit safe. It's not going to stop the CK from silver edging through. And they have the gym. It's on the Ember oh Spirit my though, Lord. so this Pudge is going to be a free snack. This CM has no movement. They're able to pop the Aeon Disc, but that just means the Phoenix is going to be like, okay, I'll just go the egg, force you guys back even further, harass you, leave you back in your spawn, Nothing to do. The shard. This is the second road. Just the shard? Yeah. Oh my goodness. It, it's been so devastating. I thought there was more. So far behind their tier 3 tower, and still he just takes barely any damage with all the heaving on the opposing side. Man, this is such a dream. You know, what better situation? 20 day net worth lead. Oh, the See stun. This. Give some cooldown. Oh man, they don't have any way to pierce the BKB. That's the one good news. Backline They're able to have this counter initiation following up the CK, but he's just staying alive. He gets the Phantasm off as well. He's trying to go in off the Ace, who does get stunned. Nice uh, jump further forward, but Sentry gets destroyed by the drag back. Jirachi is trying to man fight, but 
Typhoon still has an Aegis available as well. Thompson, no Rolling Thunder, but the BKB in the middle of the fray. They buy back onto both the Rachu and Sunring to continue this fight. Rachu jumping in with the dismember, but gets bashed up by this Thompson swashbuckle. They have very little left in the tank of Game of Gladiators. The Sunray healing is going to be pretty substantial. However, Duracho, can he get himself out of there? It seems that that's possible here. Thompson's gonna go for the chase. Thompson will actually be a little bit deeper here. Washbuckle back, they find more kills going in. Nightfall does Nightfall not fear death. It. Nightfall wants to get the Silver Edge break in, but it's instead gonna have to go for Duracho. Duracho break, broken in the process. Drag back again, and Nightfall does not care what you're doing. Because he's just smacking away onto their his opponents. Just smack, smack, smack. Going in for more buyback. Oh, out. the question mark. Oh my god, the emo question mark thrown out there. Oh, that is just nightfall. BMing to the max. Sunday you'll keep it plentiful. And they're continuing this fight. Can they keep it up? It is very unlikely. And it looks with the ramp base like nightfall and top to be able to take the series. Well, Arnold might have done more damage to that team fight than the gaming gladiators lineup. He had that armlet fully toggled. He had the confidence. He was phantasming in with like 30% HP. He's just like, yeah, sure, worst case, they just instantly delete him.